told you all Wednesday night we're going to have a star out here. George Strait or somebody like that. Brackettville, Texas, every Tuesday night. If you want to go there to Julie's restaurant, they're playing. Anyway, <clears throat> for y'all that don't know who Dudley is, Dudley and I have been friends since school, grew up together, and I just appreciate you, buddy. Thank you for coming here, especially today, bailing me out. <clears throat> I was losing my voice. I don't know what happened between the time I got up this morning and now, I'm just uh, choked up, but bless God, I got, a, I got an hour left in me. So, get your Bibles out this morning. And if you would, go to the book of uh, Matthew 4.4, 4, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4. Uh, before I get uh, ripping out in the Word here, uh, a couple of things I want to remind you. You know, a lot of times we think world affairs don't play a, a, a big picture in our lives. But listen, I need y'all this week to, or, you know, instantly and this week to be praying for the Ukraine. You know, um, the thing is, is what's real funny about it is y'all have a big interest in the Ukraine spiritually that you don't even maybe even know about. If you're attending this church and, and you've just recently been here in the last four or five years, because I don't talk about it a whole lot, but uh, we, we back in 19, we started in 1991 as soon as the wall fell over in uh, Russia and the Soviet Union started breaking up, we started praying and asking the Lord where we should work. And in 19, it came about 92 into 93, we, at the time, were here at the church doing a lot of mass printing. We had printing presses here and we were doing a lot of printing, a lot of tracks, gospel tracks going out in the world. And we came across some some Ukrainian uh, brothers that needed tracks. And so we started shipping material over that they wanted, and then um, then we got the bright idea we just might as well be cheaper to take the printing presses over there. So we smuggled into the country illegally uh, two printing presses, and uh, I got the privilege of getting to go over there in the middle of it, right as everything was, I mean, there were still, everybody was still of the communist mentality, and they did not like Americans, and I was thrown off trains and chased by the KGB, and it was fun. It was exciting. In those days, I was, I was still young, had more energy, could move faster. All my cat-like reflexes were all intact. And uh, we literally took a printing press and took it into a farmhouse that they had dug a basement of this thing into the dirt and lowered it down by ropes. It all got covered up with hay bales on top into this little area with one light bulb. And I spent 24 days teaching these guys how to print and how to run this machine. Matter of fact, the, the day I was supposed to get out of the country and I was going, they came in a panic mode and drove me across the city away from the airport and I didn't know what was going on and something had gone wrong with the press and they wanted me to uh, fix it before I left. And I was like, man, I want to get out of the country. I was ready to get out of there, you know, and, Thank God it was something simple like a spring or a, you know, just a lever that flipped wrong or whatever. But anyway, those printing presses printed thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of, of tracts and material during those years of real revival in uh, the Ukraine. Uh, you know, in those days in the Ukraine, it was nothing to have altar calls with over a thousand people coming forward and getting saved. Uh, it's a, the, the most hunger I had ever seen in people's lives. Uh, coming out of that time. So anyway, we spent a lot. And so there's a lot going on in that country. And it all is in that southern part of the Ukraine, right down close to the Black Sea and right where all the mess is going on in Crimea and all that. And so uh, you've got you've got people that your dollars and your prayers uh, in this church got saved and, and they're over there and they're in trouble. So they need your prayers. And so I don't exactly know what all's going on. I never like it when Russia's on the attack. Okay, but uh, you know I'm from the I'm from the Red Dawn uh, era. <laughs> Every young man in in the seventies who watched Red Dawn was totally impacted. Anyway, so 
But anyway, uh, so just keep them in your prayers, okay? Y'all pray for what's going on over there because you do have brothers and sisters over there you don't even know about. You'll not know till you get to heaven. But uh, uh, anyway, so be praying for that. Amen? Okay, now, last week I was, I was preaching and I was, I was talking to you about, about faith and that you have the power of faith. Now, listen, let me ask you if y'all are learning anything of these sucks. What are y'all? Say it again. What are you? Yeah, you are VIPs. You're very important people. You're very important people because Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You are sons of God. You are VIPs on the face of this earth. You have a a, a VIP card in the spirit because you are a son of God. And it's time for the church to rise up and the church Christians to act like Christians and be Christians and, and, and walk in the power of what Jesus paid for us. Amen. So say it again. Say I'm a VIP. And so VIPs have certain privileges, certain powers, and I've been preaching on this forever. And so I talked last week about you have the power of faith. And so I was explaining the difference between hearing the Word of God, simply knowing the Word of God. You, 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 you hear the Word of God, you say, oh yeah, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. But do you really believe it? There's a difference in what the Bible, what the Greek language does is when, when God, when you say, when you see a word just written down, it's called logos. It means it's the word. It's put out there in front of you. It's, it's the printed word. It's just like you're looking at those, the, the words over there on the screen. That's logos. It's printed. It's said. It's written. You can read it. It can go into your mind, and it's logos. Okay? But the Bible uses a different word here in Matthew chapter 4.4. 4. It says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the word their interpreted word is rhema. And the word rhema means it's, it's a different, it's alive. It's the word that's real to you. It's what you know to be true. It's what you believe to be true. It's what your faith is involved in. It's not that God so loved the world. Oh my God, Lord, you love me. I understand. Oh, how could you love me? But you love me. I know you love me. See, that's a rhema. But if you say, God so loved the world, but I don't see how he could love the world. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't see how he could love me. You don't really love me. You just have Logos knowledge. You don't have Rhema knowledge. And Rhema knowledge is what changes your life. Rhema knowledge is what you feed upon. Rhema knowledge is what excites you. Rhema knowledge is like what you know that you know that you know is true. Rhema knowledge is like, you know, I, 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 I've said this before, but I, you know, I haven't, I don't, I don't watch horror movies. But when I was a kid, you know, the exorcist was big and we watched the exorcist and I always got mad because the priest always gets whipped. I'm being a preacher. You know, I don't want to see the devil. I don't want to see Hollywood portraying that the demons are beating the preachers. Right. But I mean, literally Logos knowledge of it. Would you say, oh, my God, there's a devil coming. And pfft, you got run over. Raymond nods to be, oh, there's a devil coming in the name of Jesus. You stop. You have no right to come forward. See, something came out of you. Your faith, your belief, you used the word. It, it, it brought something. When the situation came into your life, something rose up in you called your faith. And that's rhema knowledge. Everybody say rhema knowledge. Rhema knowledge is what you've got to live on, folks. Logos knowledge makes you religious. If all you do is just take knowledge into your head and say, oh, that's what the Bible says, but it's not real to you, you're just religious. You're like a Pharisee. Think about the Pharisees. They knew the Bible forwards and backwards, yet they killed the Son of God. So you can be religious too. You can be a Pharisee. Are y'all with me? You can be a Pharisee. You can just have this knowledge in your head of God, this knowledge of your head. Oh, yeah, I know we shouldn't do that, but let's do it anyway. (laughs) It's not rhema to you. So you're just religious, going through the motions. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm going to take off now. and I want you to still stay in the book of Matthew. Go to chapter 8. And I want to show you something. I talked about also last week that you're not going to get Rhema knowledge unless you first start out in Logos knowledge, taking in the word, reading the word, knowing what the word says. That's where you have to start. 
But there has to be a process that you've read it, you, you're confessing it, you're praying it, you're believing it, you're standing on it, you're talking to Jesus about it and saying, Lord, I know it's what your word says, but I don't really understand it. Can you give me some more knowledge of it? Holy Spirit, help me. You're having this kind of a conversation with the Lord at all times, and then eventually you will go from Logos to Rhema because that's the, that's the principle God gave us, right? Okay, but I want to show you something here. Matthew chapter 8, verse 5. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a story of the centurion. You know it, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. For I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and comes to my servant. Do this, and he does it. And Jesus heard it, and he marveled. And he said to them, to those who were followed, Surely I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. I say to you that many will come from the east and from the west and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way as you have believed, so let it be done to you. As you have believed. Now, in this story, Jesus obviously said right off the bat that he'd just walk over there, do it the traditional way, lay hands on his servant, and he'd be healed. But the centurion said, no, 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 wait a minute. There's no sense. You don't have to go down there and go down there. Go to my house and go down there. You have to go to all this stuff. I understand authority. I'm a man under authority. I speak. I command my armies. I say, you go, and he goes. Because I'm of higher rank than he is. And I understand how that works. And I'm understanding. He said, this guy, man, this guy had wisdom, right? He had Somewhere or another, he got hold of the understanding that Jesus was the Son of God. And he said, wait a minute. If he's the Son of God, that means he's over everything in the spiritual realm. So therefore, he's really in charge, and I understand authority. So he says to Jesus, just speak the word, and it'll it'll happen. Now, uh, that's impressive, right? But just think about this. What did this guy understand? Military rank. He understood military rank. He understood that a general was over a colonel. Colonel's over a lieutenant. I mean, he understood these things. Lieutenant's over a private. And he just put it all together. You know, I, 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 I mean, maybe he, maybe he had studied about Jesus. Maybe he started out on just some Logos word of Jesus, just some general knowledge of Jesus. And he sat around and he was thinking about it. And I said, well, wait a minute, you know, this guy's doing miracles and signs and wonders. That's not a natural thing. That's a supernatural thing. So that's not really under the realm of the natural. So he must be the king of the supernatural. So if he's the king, well, I understand authority. So the king's up at the top and then the other ranks come down. And this guy, ha- I, I, I mean, I'm kind of I'm painting with a broad brush here, but this guy had to mull this over. Y'all with me? He had to sit around, chewed his cut over this thing and looked at this thing and said, something here is, is going on and I'm seeing it. So when he came to Jesus, he said, I, I got it. It's a revelation to me. You're the king. Everything uh, is, is in subjection to you. Speak the word. It'll be healed. And Jesus said, man, this guy has got, I'm, I'm saying this, this guy's got a rhema. This guy's got a real revelation going here. This guy's got it. And so he says to the man, "Uh, I'm sorry, uh, that's not the way it works in the kingdom of heaven. You don't quite understand it. No, no, it has to be this way or that way. No, he said to him, as you have believed, as you have produced faith, as you have walked in, as you have believed, so be it done unto you. The man's faith is what brought about the miracle. Listen to me. Everybody's waiting on Jesus to come bring a miracle in your life, but I'm telling you, it's your faith, your rhema, your revelation that brings the miracle to your life. And you can sit around 
all day long asking God to do something for you while he's sitting there waiting on you to do something, and that is produce faith. And you're not going to produce faith least you read the word, know what the word says, and then get it turned into a revelation so that you know that you know that you know. That's what the word says. That's what your authority is. You know, over the years, uh, you know, I've gotten, you know, into some trouble uh, with people and, uh, and, 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 and disagreements and things like that. But it always boils down to the one thing, and I've always asked them this. I said, look, wait a minute. Am I the pastor of Living Waters Church? Do you believe I'm the God-called pastor of Living Waters Church? They say, oh, yeah, you are. We believe that. Okay, then shut up. <laughs> I don't like to pull rank. I don't like to pull authority. But when it comes right down to it, it you know, I, I'm the same way on my, on my, on, when I'm working in, 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 the, in the world and, and, and you know, Wait a minute, I'm the boss, and so, you know, I don't care what you say. I'm making the decision. This is the decision. This is done. End the story. Well, the military, I was visiting with Lex, um, who's a retired colonel, and I was visiting him about generals, and we were talking about this, that, you know, generals, you, just, you know, they, they're generals. When they speak, they think everybody should jump. Y'all with me? Because that's the way they've been all their life. And then a retired general can be a very vicious person because he's still thinking everybody should jump when he's not in the military anymore. <laughs> and how much difficulties that could be when you're learning, you train that away. And everybody under you is trained that away. Wait a minute, folks. What good is a general who doesn't know his authority? What good is a Christian that doesn't know his authority? Hmm. Man, I sent that one out there like a flaming dart. Y'all didn't even see that one coming. (laughs) Starting to feel good now. I'm a little inspired. Yesterday, the Rocky movies were playing, and so I made it time to just for the last fight to see Rocky win every three, all three fights. And so I was like, yeah, can do it. We will win. The army of God will go forward. <laughs> well, what good is a Christian that doesn't know his authority? What good is a Christian going to do if he doesn't know his authority? Well, the centurion knew what was going on. Hey, you say, well, that was one isolated case. Go to chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9. Now, Jesus is in this story right here, in the verses earlier, if you read it, uh, he's going to the, the, the home of, uh, of Jairus to heal his daughter. And on the way, there's a woman who comes up behind Jesus. And it says in verse 20, Matthew 9, 20, and suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, okay, she said within herself, this is what her revelation was. Y'all with me? This is what her revelation was. So she said within herself, if I may only touch the hem of his garment, I may be made well. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he says, be of good cheer, daughter, your faith. Whose faith? Come on, say it again. Whose faith? He said, your faith has made you well. He did not say, you have come in contact with the power of the living God. He said, your faith has made you well. Now, wait a minute. Look at this. This woman had a revelation that if she touched the hem of a garment. Now, if you go back and you study the Old Testament, you find out that in the hem of a garment of a priest was a blue thread. And the blue thread represented the word of God, the promises of God to you. And it was ingrained in their mind. Maybe her parents brought that out. Maybe they taught her that. Maybe that was a big emphasis in their family life about, look at the blue thread, the blue thread. That represents the word of God. I don't know. I'm speculating here. Something happened that that woman had grown up respecting the blue thread that was in the tassel of that garment. That was her revelation. She looked at it. She saw it. She said, that represents the word of God. The promises, all the promises of God are, are, are ours. Well, then she's sick. And she said, wait a minute. God promised us healing. As a Jewish nation, we were promised healing. So wait a minute, that, that promise is mine, but I got to get to it and I got to grab it. I got to touch it. If I just touch it, I'll be healed. So she fought through a crowd 
Because you see, folks, listen to me. When you start to try to walk in faith or you start to try to walk in what you know the Bible says to be true, you're going to be challenged. You're not just going to walk out there and just walk by faith and everything's just going to, you're just going to be, you know, calling things in and, and, and all that stuff without some opposition. I wake up every morning and I know that the devil hates my guts and I'm happy. I am glad to know that when, when, when I wake up in the morning, hell starts to shake. But I've also learned in life not to get upset when things don't go like I think they're supposed to go because I know that hell is always going to be fighting me. And he's fighting you. And the more you step out in faith and the more you walk as a Christian and the more that you don't punch that person but you forgive that person, hell doesn't like that. The more you're going to get inspired and excited and go tell somebody what the Word of God says, and I'm so excited, my Pastor Robert has been preaching so good, you need to look at it. Let's, let's sit down together and watch this YouTube video together because almost you need to hear what this says. You think the devil's going to let you do that? It took me a while to figure this out. I, I've always kind of said this. Uh, this is not biblical. This is thus saith Robert Richards. But I've always thought that every person that got saved like, they got a 90-day grace period. Like, they just kind of, it was just lived in clouds of glory for 90 days. After 90 days, then, you know, you're free bait, and you better have in those 90 days gotten figured out how to fight. Because all hell's going to break loose after that. I can remember my wife and I determined that we're going to be in church every Sunday, going to come to church, we're going to do this, and then we're not the next morning, you know. The toaster caught on fire that morning, burned up, the dryer went out, the cut the the car had a flat tire when I went out to it, went down the road, the horses were out, got them back in, drove down the road, a buzzard from hell flew out, (laughs) tried to crash into the side of the car, we dodged it. I'm like, this is ridiculous, an obstacle course going down the road this morning, hogs running across the road, dodging them, deer everywhere. I'm like, what did every animal from hell is just a sent to attack our car this morning or what? We finally get to church, you know, we're just exhausted. And I was like, I tell you what, devil, you, we're, we're here. We're about, bless God. We're, we'll be back next Sunday. You just might as well get together. And it had to come into a fight. You know, we had to get into fight mode. And I'm telling you, the enemy doesn't want you. But, you know, after a while, it was like he gave up because he knew no matter what happened, I was going to get in the car and I was going to come to church. Well, if you're going to walk by faith, you're going to have to know what you know to be true based upon the Word of God, not because of some feeling, not because you prayed a certain way and you felt the wisp of wind and you knew that was God and that day a lily flew by and you, and so you're always looking for that. No, you live by what the Word of God says. If the promise is yours, then the promise is yours and don't let nothing talk you out of it. And when things aren't going right or aren't going the way the promise says, it's the faith, the rhema, the revelation on the inside of you that causes you to rise up and say, no, the word of God says this, and I will go forth. And that is true what the word says. And Jesus, I'm standing on the rock, and I'll stand here in the face of adversity, and I will go forward because your word says so, so that mountain's got to move. But if you don't have that rhema, and you know what you say? Ah! that woman grabbed the tassel because she believed that to be true boom he said well when your faith just, you got you healed her faith contacted the power the supernatural power of god boom she was healed but she had to fight through a crowd because if they would have discovered that that woman had an issue of blood because every person she came in contact with, every person she touched became ceremonially unclean, they would have taken her outside the city and stoned her. So it wasn't just like willy-nilly that this lady went down there. She went down there knowing if she was discovered it would cost her her life, but she believed it to be true. If she could get to the hem of the garment, she would be healed and all would be okay. See, nobody got shot at this morning, or I hope not, coming to church. None of you had to sneak into underground situations and, you know, and, and, and to try to get to church because if you were discovered, you'd be killed as a Christian. We don't live there. Yeah, not yet, but it'll be different here because we got something to shoot back with. This cowboy ain't going down easy. It'll be a blaze of glory, but it's going to be a different blaze than they'd expected. 
But, I mean, China this morning, they're sneaking around trying to get to church. They're having that. There's places, folks, where people are praying. And you, listen, you don't even know the location of church unless you pray and get it by the Spirit. <laughs> don't you know you'd feel stupid showed up? I thought they're having church here. Nobody's there. Do you know that there's a revival going on amongst in Muslim nations? That Jesus is appearing to Muslim people and they're getting saved by record numbers. Folks, there's a lot of good things going on in the world right now. There's a lot of bad things. A lot of the bad things are bringing about some good things. But I want to tell you something. All I'm saying to you is we can't be as a church. I can't speak for everybody else in the world, but as a church, for Living Waters Church, we can't just be fat and sassy and laid back and not, not being everything that we can be. It's time to use our faith. It's time to grow our faith. It's time to know what the Word of God says and realize that it's the faith on the inside of us that's going to propel us into the future of whatever's coming. You all with me? The Bible's full of Old Testament stories of miracles happening. Well, the New Testament, too. Jesus breaks 12 loaves of bread and, and, and a few small fish and feeds 5,000 people. Okay? I, I can just tell you this. Write me a letter if you don't like it. but Or just talk to Dwayne. <laughs> you, you cannot stockpile enough food for a famine. I mean, you know, if there's a famine, you can't stockpile enough food. I mean, you can get, you can, you maybe go longer than somebody else. You're going to run out. Do you have faith to believe God for food to be manifest? Do you have faith to believe God to chunk one blade of, uh, one grain of rice into a pot and make soup? All I can say is you need to start practicing now. You say, well, what do you mean practicing now? Start on the small things. Believe God for. Exercise your faith. Start small. So then when it comes down to big things, you have faith. If you don't start out, listen. This, you may think this is funny, but I learned, I learned to walk in faith believing for car batteries, tires. I would pray. Jesus, I need some tires. I didn't have any money. I pray, say, oh, God, I need some tires. Man, I'm running bald on tires, man. I got to do something, Lord, for tires. And then my father-in-law called me and said, man, you can believe this. Somebody come in here and got a whole new set of tires, and these things aren't half bad. And you, you get them out. They left me the tires. You can have them. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I got tires. I'd go put somebody else's old tires on. I mean, that's how I survived. My wife and I, we lived like that for years and years and years. Believe in God for every little something that we needed. I have a special pen at home, writing pen, that, that I didn't have enough money to buy a pen. I wanted a nice pen, something that looked nice, something to put in my pocket. You know, I knew I didn't have Mont Blanc faith. I just believe it for a really nice looking Parker, you know. I mean, I didn't have three bucks to spend on a pen. And I said, Lord, I went into the store. Well, how can you have faith for something you don't know what you want? I wasn't playing generalized. I wanted a specific pen, so I went to the store. Walked in the store, looked at pens, went in there and looked at pens. I said, Lord, I'd like a pen that looked like this, but I'd like it to have a little round ball on the end of it so when you put it in my shirt, it wouldn't tear my shirt or something like that because I, I don't have that many shirts anyway, so I don't want my shirt torn. And so I needed to have a little ball on the end of it like that. And a wood one would be nice. I think a wood would be nice, Lord. Man, about a week later, a guy comes up and says, Lord, I'm sorry it's taking so long, but the Lord spoke to me about giving you, a, giving you something, and I wanted to give it to you. Open it up, a little wooden box, a pen, it had my name on it. First thing I did is I picked it up, I looked at it, see if it had that little ball. It did. I said, Jesus, thank you, Lord. I have that pen. That's a special pen. Whenever I get discouraged in life, I pull that pen out. And I hold on to that pen and I look and say, my God, if my God can give me a pen, he can give me anything. Are you with me? You see, folks, that's how you have to live. You have to live by faith. But you're going to only live by faith if you believe, well, I'm such a bad person. I, Jesus, he ain't going to give me nothing. That's what you believe. Ah, you know, he, how could he forgive me? I can't even forgive myself. I'm such a bad person. I did this. I did that. 
Listen to me. I want you to understand something. I'm a bad person. I don't do everything right. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. So, man, I am sparkling white, pretty clean. Man, it says I'm holy and, and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Not because of what I do, but because of what the blood of Jesus does. So I don't walk the, the Christian walk by my great ability. Then I'd be doing works. I walk the Christian walk by what, the, what I know that the blood of Jesus did and bought for me. When I pray, I'm praying. I start out, Lord, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. Because it's the blood that only gives me authority in heaven. The blood that washed my sins away is my badge of authority on this earth. So all you're doing when you're walking around saying, well, I don't see how God could forgive me. I don't see how I could do this. I don't know about this and all that. You just don't have any faith in the blood of Jesus could wash away your sins. And you're walking by works. And I want you to understand something. Man, I feel this one coming. (sighs) By works, you're walking by works. You're nothing but a stinking Pharisee. You're lying. You're deceived. You've got a demon devil thinking. <laughs> Smile at the person beside you. say, God, I love him. Pastor Robert's all pumped up. I actually one time was praying, and, and, and the Lord spoke to me. He says, do you enjoy thinking like a devil? And I was like, what? Because I was having thoughts like that and saying, well, you know, I know. I mean, who am I? I mean, you know to do anything and you know and i was thinking i was thinking thoughts like that and the lord said you 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 like thinking like a devil well i said oh man that's terrible that's lord i don't want to have demon thinking he said well then rise up and think like a son of god be a vip walk in what's what i paid for you believe it walk in a rhema of it let me show you another one here Matthew chapter 9. Let's go to chapter 9 go down to verse 27. It says, When Jesus had departed from there, two blind men following him cried out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come to the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to him, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were open. I've always contended that the funny thing would have been if a guy would have got half vision. Like one guy, he had enough faith, he got 20-20 vision. The other guy got like 20-60 or something. He's like, I can see something. Better than I was. He said, according to your faith. I just want this to be simply for you to understand this simply. Okay. Is that the simplicity of it all is that, you know, if you have faith or not. Because it's really, truly what you believe. And if you can be talked out of it, you don't have faith. It's not a rhema to you. It's a logos to you. So if. Frank over here is believing God for something, and he knows what the promise says. Let's just say finances. He's believing God for some financial provision. And he knows that God says in his word, he has the scriptures down, and he knows what the Logos says. But then he listens to a voice in his head saying, you know, why would God want to give you that? God's not going to prosper you like that. I mean, what? who are you thinking? That's not right. I mean, that's just, oh, that's just hocus pocus kind of stuff and he says well you know i know i guess you're right I, you know there's just i don't know lord i really need something but and he gets into this debate i can just tell you he doesn't have faith because he's being talked out of what the logos says to him rhema faith real faith is he says look i don't know how you got in my head but shut up. This is what the word of God says. I know this is what God's word says. I am believing this is what God's word says. I walk like this is what God's word says. And therefore, God then provides. Because faith is operated. Matthew chapter 12. Just keep on going. Go to chapter 12. Is this helping anybody today? 
Well, you got lunch here in just a minute, you know, so it's free. You ain't going to spend any money this afternoon, and it's all over there getting warmed up, and so you don't have to go anywhere, so I'm going to go a little longer. I've not even got to the good part yet. That's what makes me mad. I ain't going to get there today. 12, Matthew 12, 33. It says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance, out of the abundance, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you want to know if you're in faith or not, ask, just listen to what comes out your mouth. Because your mouth is speaking what's in your heart. If you walk around and say, nothing's ever going to change, it never is going to change. I'm so stupid. That's exactly what you really believe in your heart. I've been praying for him, but he ain't going to change. He ain't never going to change. I've been praying for so long, I've given up hope. He he, he ain't never going to change. That's what's in your heart. You want to know what's in there? Just listen to what comes out your mouth. Because whatever comes out of your mouth is what's in your heart. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it. In the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. In other words, what you're speaking out of your mouth is truly what you're believing, so therefore that's what's going to send your rudder in that direction, and you're either going to cause your own destruction or your own victory. Okay, can I just. Let me shift just a little bit. Is everybody in here a free will being? Right? Don't we all have free will? Now, there's laws that try to hold us in in the corral, right? And there's laws, you know, like we can't just go crazy, do anything you want. There's laws that are going to get you, all right? And so, but your free will being, God's not going to put his will, exact his will upon you either, right? Your free will being. The devil can't exact his will upon you. He can manipulate you or whatever, but he can't exact his will upon you. Your free will being. That's the, one of the powers that you have is the power of free will. Okay? If God is going to make it equal for everybody, The Bible says God didn't have favorites. Everybody's a favorite. All right? If he's going to make it equal for all of us, you know, each one of you get equal power, equal love, equal mercy, equal everything, your free will beings, then he just threw it all into your court and said, you choose how much you want. It's the only way it could be fair. You get it all, but you only walk in what you believe. Listen, God's not holding anything back from you. There is nothing that is in all of heaven. The Bible says, Ephesians 1, 3, you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Every means every. Everything in heaven, all of it is yours. All of it is sitting there. All of it is a mass, but it's only going to come to you according to what you believe. That's the only way God can be equal right through everything. I give you everything, but how much you're willing to work for it, to believe for it, to, to produce faith, then you can have it. See, everybody wants to believe God is a communist. God is not a communist. God does not try to make everybody equal by giving everybody equal things. No, no, he's not a communist. God's a capitalist. He is. He's a capitalist. He says, look, I give you everything. All of it's there available for you. You Read the Logos, 
Believe my word, and as you have believed, so be it according to you. As you're willing to get out there and work, so you're going to earn. In the capitalist words. You see what I'm saying? See, everybody says, well, I just think in the end times, so God, he's a God of love, and he's just going to, everything's going to be okay, and we're just going to, you know, run through the fields and jump through the daisies and, oh, go to heaven and it's going to be great. No. That's the biggest bunch of malarkey. You know that stupid Coke commercial you always have? We'd like to do the world of, you know, in perfect harmony and everybody's running through the fields. Ah, yeah. No, it ain't going to be like that at all. I say, tell you, it is not going to be like that at all. It's not. That door is going to be kicked open in heaven poof, and open up. And it, he's going to say, come on in. And let's see what you did with what I gave you. Go read the story of the talents. He said he gave one ten, one five, you know, one one. And said, what, do you, how, what did you do with it? What, you're working with it. Listen, wh- he's going to ask you, what did you do to read the Logos, to read the word and turn that into faith? And you're going to say, well, I believed you were the Son of God. Great, you did one thing, right? Last scripture. Let me just show you that. Romans chapter 10. So I can just put this out there so you all can hang on to it. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Familiar passage of Scripture. Look what it says here. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So in other words, with what comes out of your mouth and what's believed in your heart is what brings salvation to your life. What I'm talking about this morning is no foreign thing to you because that's how you got saved. You confess with your mouth, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you were raised from the dead. And then God, by that faith produced in your heart and the confession out of your mouth, boom, salvation was yours. It is the same principle for every promise that God has in his, in his word to you. It's the same principle. Look. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. The heart and the mouth go hand in hand. When you really truly believe something in your heart, you're going to speak it out of your mouth. And when you speak it out of your mouth, it will come to pass, good or bad. Good or bad. God wants us to act like him. He wants us to act like he does. Go to Genesis chapter, you don't have to go there, I'm just saying, go read in Genesis chapter 1. How many, or how many of you know it says, and God said, let there be light. And God said, let there be land. And God said, let there be animals. God said. Eight times God said and things happened. You with me? I'm going kind of fast here because I want to wrap this up. Just listen. Eight times God said and things happened. Eight times God spoke, he confessed, something came out of his mouth, and something was created. Right? Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us that all this world and everything around it was created by faith. So when God said, he operated in the same exact principle that you're operating in by confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart. God did the same thing. That's a God way to operate. He spoke it, he believed it, and it came to pass. God created this world this way. He created you and me this way. He did everything this way because God is a God of faith. God operates by what he knows. Faith is nothing more than what do you know? It's not some mystical aura down on the inside of you. It's It's not some green foam down there, something they can cut up there. Whoa, whoa, God, what is this? Oh, he's got a big old lump of faith in here. No, there's nothing there except it's what you believe. It's not a natural thing. It's a supernatural thing. We operate, we operate in 
types of faith all the time. Things that you believe just naturally. I don't wake up in the morning and say, oh God, is there air? Because I think all the oxygen may have been sucked out of the earth that night. I feel like it sometimes, but I'm pretty confident that when I wake up, there's going to be air to breathe. But if I was an astronaut, I may worry about a hole in my suit. You follow me? All I'm saying is, church, listen, now is the day to get in faith. Now is the day to sort out what you really, truly believe. If you want to know what you believe, listen to what comes out of your mouth. Listen to what comes out of your mouth, because that's what's in your heart. That's the test. Listen to what comes out of your heart. If you say, somebody says, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm just hoping and praying God's going to do something. That's where your faith is. You're just hoping and praying. And I want you all to understand. There are times that I have had to. Read the scripture. And confess the scripture, even though there was still fear in my heart. Because I haven't quite got into faith yet but i have learned if you control your tongue you will eventually line everything up i kind of have sensitive ears and people there's a lot of people uh, who you know get really offended about people cursing or cussing but something that offends me more than anything in life is to hear somebody talking trash out of their mouth that's not a faith a christian that is nothing irritates me more than that nothing irritates me more than than hearing somebody that has the potential to be a VIP and walk in the kingdom of God and listening to what's coming out of their mouth and saying, my God, you don't believe anything. I want you to understand something. We win. We win and we're destined for victory. You're destined for great things. You are destined for victory. That is what the word says. The word says that you are the temple of the living God, that the spirit of God lives and dwells on the inside of you. When you made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, you were destined for greatness, destined for victory. Don't settle for the crummy life the devil wants to to, to feed you. Don't settle for that at all. Stand up. Listen to what comes out of your mouth. Rise up and say no more. So you want a piece of me, you done messed up big time. It's good preaching. Good preaching. Amen? Put your Bibles up if you would. Stand up. And if you would just just bow your hearts and bow your heads to the Lord for just a minute and, and let's just pray. Let me talk to you for just a second. If you're out here today in the congregation or you're watching by video and man, you, you don't know that you're right with God. You don't know that today if you died, you'd go to heaven and you're listening to this word and you're being stirred and you're and, and, and you don't know truly if you've ever really made things right with Jesus. Well, then I want to give you an opportunity because Romans 10, 9 says, if you'll just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, if you're in the place today of faith, you're in the place today that your heart's pounding and you're saying, oh, I do want to commit my life to Jesus. Then, folks, I want to pray with you. I just want to pray with you. If you're watching by video and you're sitting there and, and or listening by audio today and your, your heart's pounding and you're saying, I want to be right with God, then I want to pray with you. So if that's you in this room, are you on video? Are you on audio, just raise your hand or raise your heart to the Lord right now. 
and say, yeah, Lord, today's my day. Today, I want to be right with you. I want to know that I'm right with you. I'm ready to meet you. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone, just lift up your hands and say, yeah, Lord, that's me. I'm praying today. I'm making my life right with you. Thank you, Jesus. Church, I want you to pray with me. Those of you out there watching and listening, I want you to pray right now with all of your heart. Say, Jesus, come into my life. I'm a mess. I need help. And I believe with all of my heart that you're the son of God. And you can save me and deliver me and wash me with your blood. Today, I give my life to you. And thank you for taking it. And making heaven my home. Jesus, I love you. Thank you so much. Amen. Church, listen to me. That's a simple prayer. You pray a prayer like that or you tell somebody or talk to somebody or teach somebody that, and, and lead somebody to the Lord like that. A simple prayer from your heart. Because see, it's faith and confession that brings about salvation. Not works. Amen. So listen, can I have my prayer team come down? If you're here today and, and, and you need prayer or you, you've got something stirring on the inside of you or God's speaking to you, listen, don't get in a hurry. Don't, don't, don't run off and get in a hurry. But just come down here up front and just pray with us and, and let God bless you and minister to you today. So if you would, take the person's hand beside you. And I'm going to pray and bless all the food and everything going on so those others of you can be dismissed and go over to, to the dinner on the grounds. So, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for just blessing our day, blessing our time, blessing our food. I just ask you today, Lord Jesus, to just begin to just knit us together as a church. And just knit us together as, as brothers and sisters in Christ. And help us, Lord God, to use our faith to, to minister to people, to speak to people. This week, Lord, just let people come across our path and let us be able to tell them how much we love you and how much you mean to us, Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you for your healing power touching lives. And Lord, we give you all the praise for it. Now bless this food. Bless our fellowship today, Lord. Bless you, church. Stay here today and fellowship with us.